So, hi and hello. Um, first of all, I want to apologize for my PowerPoint presentation, which was constructed on an iPhone, which is not too easy if you are over 40 without reading glasses. Uh, but I tried my best because my, my notebook broke in Venice, so I brought my analog one with my scribbled um, things. And please, I heard some German around over there, and I know Christine is here, and Achim, please help me if I'm struggling for words, and please everybody tell me if you can't understand my English. So I'm talking now about a quite special thing. I'm not sure if you ever heard um, about the problems we have in Germany between East and Western Germans and about uh, how to present and represent the art of the or from the or in the GDR, the German Democratic Republic. So just I started four years ago, four and a half years ago, as the director of the museum you can see here. It's the Albertinum in Dresden, and it's part of the state art collections. And we start with 1800 until now, so we have a very big Caspar David Friedrich collection, also one of the biggest Auguste Rodin collections outside of France. So here you can see where Dresden is located. I don't know if you have ever been there. It's known for its Baroque architecture. It's quite beautiful. And it's located uh, at the border, far east. So it's close to Poland and to the Czech Republic. And in GDR times, it was called the uh, Valley of the Kulas. Um, because in this part of Eastern Germany, you could not receive uh, West German television or radio. When I uh, started, I was really flashed about the, uh, the arts that were produced in the GDR that I had never heard about. So of course, everybody knows uh, the socialist realism. And when I got there, I learned so much about other things that were produced. So in the 80s, performance, uh, fashion, music, um, etc., was really working together in a crossover. And I was fascinated by that. And one of my first shows was about a festival that you can see on the image in 85 that, was, um, um, that took place close to Dresden. So you can see an East German band, Ornament and Verbrechen, which was a kind of punk band. <coughs> this is a video by an artist called Christine Schlegel. She worked with Super 8, and it's a dancer, Fina. She was really known for her improvisations and performances in Eastern Germany, and now she's um, living abroad and still dancing, still keeps dancing. Um, then I prepared a show for Karl-Heinz Adler, which is also um, a Dresden-based artist for his 19th birthday. So he was working um, in an abstract, constructivist way. And if you went to this year by any year, maybe you saw Kolibal in the Czech pavilion. Anybody saw it? So it's, it's quite similar. You can compare those two positions, and yeah, he had no chance to show in the GDR because of the restrictive um, policies uh, then, and for me it was important to show to the people in Dresden, but also to the people abroad because we have many tourist visitors. Um, what I did not know was or not expect that these two shows were kind of provocation for the people in Dresden. And what followed was really um, a flood of hate mails and hate letters. And there were um, articles in the local newspaper. And yeah, I will speak about this very important debate we had those or this last two years in Dresden. 
So all started uh, in late 2017 by um, an article published by a um, local art historian in a local newspaper. It was published just before the elections, I have to say. Um, that was a shortened and slightly updated version of a longer essay he had written earlier. Um, the article stated a cultural colonization from the West, which ignores art from the German Democratic Republic due to the strong and ignorant presence of Western leadership in cultural institutions as well uh, in general positions of power in the East, of Germany, of course. As a result, he stated no East German thinking, concerns, discourses could enter cultural institutions. The author consequently charged me as a Western-born director with deliberately removing little by little masterpieces of painting made produced in the GDR between 1949 and 1990 in favor of art from the West and contemporary art. What followed was a back and forth in the local and national feuilletons, creating a climate of hardened fronts. So um, the debate per se was really important and necessary, but what happened uh, was that um, the right-wing political party, which is called AFD, um, Alternative für Deutschland, which is very strong in Eastern Germany and especially in Dresden, Saxony. They are the strongest party right now. Of, yeah, they have uh, around 29 percent. Um, really try to instrumentalize this debate and um, try to spoil it somehow. And uh, what they did is they made me count arts from the East and the West of Germany um, on display at the Albertinum. Um, it was really difficult for me because our database did not separate between East and, and Western uh, German art, but I had to go through the exhibition and account, and I counted, and it was, um, yeah, it was 77 uh, Eastern German artworks produced between 49 and 90. It was uh, around 24, I think, works from Western. Uh, Germany, but it was mostly Gerhard Richter and R.R. Penck, both artists born in Dresden. And of course, we have the Gerhard Richter archive in our museum, so I, I really have to show those works. And um, But what I learned later, that they were the most hated artist mm -hmm. for the... So, so as I was really confused, because I, 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 I thought I was really showing um, and interested in Eastern German art, I initiated uh, a series of public discussions with our public, and it was called um, Wir müssen reden, Bilderstreit mit Blickkontakt. Bilderstreit was the title of um, the whole debate. Wir müssen reden, uh, in German sounds a bit like you have a conflict with your partner and you have to speak about it. So it really felt urgent for me and I wanted to get in contact with my public. So for the first discussion, uh, around 600 people showed up. And yeah, I was trying hard to find a format for these talks that really allowed people to speak up and to discuss on eye level. Therefore, we did not have a podium, but integrated, I think it were about 12 persons on, the, on a long table. There were politicians, art historians, artists, uh, and so on. And of course, also uh, Mr. Kaiser, who started uh, the debate, and a sociologist, etc. And you can see our forum there. And yeah, so, so it really worked out and people um, talked. And it was, um, and you, you really um, could feel that it was not really about the art of the GDR, but of, about all the humiliations that people in the East had suffered after the fall of the Berlin Wall. And when I talk now about the fall of the Berlin Wall, it is something that East Germans really uh, do not like because the wall didn't just tumble down. It was torn down by the people who actively um, 
um, um, worked for it in the peaceful re um, revolution. <coughs> Then later, around 25, um, discussion followed. I have to drink a schluck. Um. And <coughs> sorry. Then I bought uh, a piece by Andreas Angelidakis that you may have seen. <coughs> At last year's documenta. Can read meanwhile. <laughs> <laughs> is this written by you? Right. you? Sorry, this is your text. Yeah, it's a text. I've <laughs> told. <coughs> yes, by me and by, by our curator Kathleen Reinhardt. You may know her. <coughs> yeah. Uh, <coughs> Sorry. And um, <clears throat> after the first discussion, we prepared a show um, with our collection of GDR arts. And you can see an image here. This was a work by Merlinger that we really found in our storage that nobody knew that it existed. It's called The Free World of Imperialism. This is, of course, Wolfgang Matoya that you know all. What we, um, in the exhibition of our collection that we presented um, with um, <coughs> the year they were bought, so we started in the 40s, then 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, to also speak about the acquisition policy in the GDR that was um, changing a lot during the GDR and uh, later asked um, the people what kind of art they really wanted to see on display <coughs> um, in the permanent exhibition. <coughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> so what was um, really interesting was that people voted for those two images I showed you before. So it's at the beach, you see on the left, and Peter at the zoo yeah, that you can see on the right. And they were um, the favorites by the public. Um, and it was the same result as the survey of the public um, <coughs> was in 1963, I think, at a GDR art exhibition that took place at the Albertinum, so at the same museum. And at those times, the director of the gallery was asked to buy the 
on the beach piece, but he refused because he said it was no good art. But then it was um, bought by state officials and given to this head of state, Walter Ulbricht, as a present for his birthday. So after the peaceful revolution, it came back to our museum. <laughs> And <coughs> what became clear is that it was about um, the kind of works that people really identified with, that were identity building for them, that they knew because they were published uh, a million times on stamps that were all uh, present in, um, as postcards or in school books and everybody had a reprint at home. So it was um, very much a about um, <coughs> um, really known works of art. And the second um, a point that for people were really important was that uh, they wanted um, art to remember the destruction of Dresden in February 1945. So it was very much about anti-war paintings. Here you see the destruction of Dresden, which in GDR times had problems because of the background that is formalistic um, and was not what, um, what socialist realism should present. And it's <coughs> I have now th this exactly those works on display because I found it really uh, important to react on what people uh, wanted. But at the same time, it is interesting that I read the other day the um, the program of the AFT party for the uh, local elections, and it's um, that they have. I don't know. I think a part like this talking about the arts, which is special, which I, I never saw in other parties. Have I to finish? No. And um, it is saying that the arts or the, the most important purpose of art is to remember um, the destruction of Dresden in 45. Um, and um, it is a fact that was already instru instrumentalized by the National Socialists and then later also by the officials, the GDR officials. <coughs> um, what was obvious in these discussions and the letters I received that uh, it was only about realistic painting, of course not about other things that were produced in the GDR and there was not one woman uh, artist that people missed in the permanent exhibition or in the GDR arts. So uh, what was um, <coughs> important to me to organize a show with radical women artists behind the Iron Curtain and the title was Uh, here you can see some of the exhibitions of the GDR that took place at the Albertinum. Yeah, and here I find a, co um, a quite interesting quotation by my colleague, our curator for contemporary art, Katrin Reinhardt, who is originally from the East and then with her parents as a child, um, went to Western Germany and she's talking here about uh, something that happened at, at school when she was 10 years old. Can you all read it from the back? So anyway, when I was in the fifth grade, the first year of high school, my art teacher was looking for punishment for me as I had not stopped talking to my neighbor and was supposedly disturbing the rest of the class. She assigned me to find the answer to the question of what art was. I was to write it down and bring it to class the next week. I consulted our household encyclopedia, 
was convinced that the question was very complicated and copied the entry word for word. The following week, I handed her the sheet of paper and watched her eyes get smaller and smaller as she studied this, in my eyes, untouchable encyclopedic definition. Then she started to laugh, and I asked her what was wrong, if I indeed had failed the task. She laughed some more and even called one of her colleagues in so they could have a good laugh at it together. I again asked what was wrong. She asked where I had copied it from, and I told her the encyclopedia. She looked at me and said, you're from the East, right? Yes, I said. She nodded, and that was the end of the conversation. I had looked up the definition of art in our family encyclopedia, which we had brought with us when we moved. It was published in Leipzig in the 1980s. Now, so many years later, this episode comes back to me as I'm still searching for the answer. And um, I think this is... Um, tells a lot about the situation, and I think that the Cold War really reverberates until now, two minutes, and uh, for example, we have right now at the Albertinum a show about uh, Kandinsky, Mondrian, Lisitsky, and the abstract constructivist uh, avant-garde in Dresden in the 20s, and I think in Germany nobody knows that Kandinsky sold his first abstract painting to the um, local gallery, that Mondrian had more works in Dresden than any other German town. Um, Kandinsky had his big show for his 60th birthday, and the most revolutionary um, spaces by Lisitsky and by Mondrian uh, were developed for Dresden. And of course, this is also a result of the um, division of, of Germany, that uh, art history on both sides of the Iron Curtain has been one-sided and one-dimensional. And um, so the Western art history didn't look to the eastern side of the uh, country, and in eastern Germany, of course, this narrative of abstract painting um, was nothing they wanted to remember, when even uh, referring to Picasso was uh, a problem. And it became clear to me the other day when we had a talk about Kandinsky, a very old man stood up and he said, well, I really can't believe it that we are here right now in a museum talking openly about Kandinsky. And I was so shocked that, uh, of course, 30 years after the war, we have still um, these different opinions. And when I showed um, one of the first images was the show by Karl-Heinz Adler, who was an abstract painter, that um, people told me that I wanted to teach them what good art was and that I wanted to implement my Western conception of arts, which of course might be true because I'm Western edu educated and of course um, also this reverberates. But um, at the same time, it is not true what people um, say in, in Dresden. Um, they always tell me, but the abstract art has nothing to do with our art history and with our town. And that's definitely not true, as we are showing with our exhibition. But there are also 19th century, 20th century artists that are not known abroad, not known in uh, West Germany, but um, for sure not here, because um, during the GDR, uh, many, um, there were many artists that nobody spoke about, and I think this is uh, what I have to do the next years, so to fill the gaps in our collection, also the non-official um, uh, works of art, female artists from Eastern Germany, but also from Eastern Europe, because we have close to nothing in our collection so far. and. Yeah, and I think I have to finish. So thank you and sorry for all this coughing.